name is Susan Isaac. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics at Duke University. The objective for module two is to describe methods to calculate energy expenditure in the preterm and term infant. Let's revisit the energy balance equation that we learned about in the first module of this series. As a reminder, the classic energy balance equation states that energy intake equals energy loss plus energy expended plus energy stored. Let's look more critically at energy expenditure in this module. Energy expenditure includes energy for resting metabolism, physical activity, thermoregulation, and synthesis and storage of new tissue. Energy expenditure can be determined by measuring the heat production from consuming substrate. When substrates such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are oxidized, energy, heat, and carbon dioxide are released. These oxidation products cannot be used directly. Instead, they must be converted into usable forms of energy, mostly ATP. To determine the efficacy of various energy sources to produce energy, we can use the respiratory quotient, or RQ. The RQ is a dimensionless number used in calculations of resting metabolic rate. The RQ is the ratio of the volume of carbon dioxide produced to the volume of oxygen consumed during the oxidation process. For example, the oxidation of glucose consumes 6 moles of oxygen and produces 6 moles of carbon dioxide plus water and ATP. Because 6 moles of oxygen produces an equivalent number of moles of carbon dioxide, the respiratory quotient equals 1. The respiratory quotient depends on the quality of the fuel being metabolized. The RQ for most forms of energy used by neonates ranges from 0.7 to 1. In general, molecules that are more oxidized, such as glucose, require less oxygen to be fully metabolized and therefore have higher respiratory quotients. Conversely, Molecules that are less oxidized, such as fatty acids, require more oxygen for their complete metabolism and have lower respiratory quotients. Underfeeding and lipogenesis are suggested by a decreased respiratory quotient, meaning that more oxygen is consumed than carbon dioxide is produced. This can be seen in neonates receiving elevated percentages of fats in their diet. Conversely, attempts to maximize carbohydrate calories for growth or provision of glucose rates greater than 12.5 mg per kilo per minute to treat hypoglycemia may lead to a respiratory quotient of 1 or greater. The excessive carbon dioxide produced when the respiratory quotient is greater than 1 suggests that more carbon dioxide is produced than oxygen consumed. This may raise the minute ventilation, increasing work of breathing, and or leading to increased ventilatory support. In Respiratory quotient of 0.5 or greater is typically seen in growing premature infants on full enteral feeds. Indirect calorimetry is the most common method used by clinicians to obtain measurements of oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production used to calculate the respiratory quotient. Indirect calorimetry utilizes the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide in inspired gas the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide in expired air, and the flow of the expiratory circuit to calculate oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production. It has acceptable precision in newborns and infants, acknowledging limitations when greater than 50% oxygen is used or if an air leak is present around an endotracheal tube. The results derived from indirect calorimetry can also be used to calculate energy expenditure. Energy expenditure calculations originally required correction for protein oxidation using the measurement of nitrogen in urine. In 1949, Weir worked out a mathematical simplification of the energy expenditure equation that included the protein effect as a constant. This simplified energy expenditure equation usually only oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production. It provides valid estimates of energy expenditure, which may be used clinically. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for your attention.